This week we read the Parsha of Vayikra, which is the first Parsha in the third book of the Chumash, the book of Vayikra. And it comes off the back of last week's Parsha where we read about the final erecting of the tabernacle. And immediately after the tabernacle was erected, the cloud of glory descends onto the tabernacle. And in fact, Moshe Rabbeinu is advised that he is not authorized to enter. And there's a break, a break between last week's parasha and this week's parasha, which in the Torah, the way that it's written, is a larger break than normal, as is the case whenever you have a break between one book and another. But this week's parasha, God calls out to Moshe, Vayikra el Moshe. He calls out to Moshe and he invites him in, essentially. When we look at it, and we see a small aleph, in the word of Vayikra, our rabbis make tremendous comment on this particular idea. And one of the comments which they make is that the expression of Vayikra is one which denotes a tremendous affinity and affection. It is a kind of calling that is between two kindred spirits, between two soulmates almost. It's not the kind of expression that is, would be used, for example, in a business context, but rather specifically as a, an expression of closeness and affection and affinity. And it reflects God's tremendous love for Moshe Rabbeinu. In fact, it doesn't even tell us who called him. It just simply says, Vayikra el Moshe, and he called out to Moshe. And our rabbis comment and they say in the Hasidic literature, that the absence of saying that God called out to Moshe is because any one of the names that are used to mention God is a name. And a name by its very definition does not really speak about the individual, or in this case God. Rather, it's either a form of communication. For us, the function of a name is that we can call out to an individual and get their attention. In God's instance, it denotes a particular attribute of God. For example, the name a Yud, the Hey, and a Vav, and a Hey, which we're not allowed to say, represents the aspect of God which is preceding and beyond time. Haya, Hove, Ve God was before the creation of the world. God is at any present given moment in time. And Yihye, God will be for all eternity. And it's that idea that is expressed in the name of Yud Ahei Avav Ahei. Each one of these represents and reflects a particular aspect, a dimension in which God interacts either with the world or the individual. And therefore, when it simply says, Vayikra, and he called out, it's indicating to us that God called out to Moshe, not in the way that God is expressed, but the way that God is intimately God's essence called out to Moshe in an expression of tremendous love and affection, devotion and connection. This love and devotion extends not only to Moshe Rabbeinu, but rather it extends to the entire Jewish people. In the Haftarah that is read in most instances on this week's parsha, it commences, Amzu Yatsar Tili Tehilati Yisapeiru. This nation that I formed for me, says God, will speak my praise. And in those words, those, that opening salvo almost of the Haftarah, God is telling each and every one of us of the Jewish people that we were created for God. God wanted to create us. Amzuya Tzartili, He created the Jewish people for me. And that's the first fundamental thing that a Jew has to realize, that we were created by God, for God, and therefore there's a tremendous love which God has for each and every single Jew. Tehillati Yisapeiru, we have to realize that every single Jew, by virtue of our existence, is speaking the praise of God. You know, we talk about the seven wonders of the world, we talk about the marvels of society, <clears throat> different things that were created. The truth is, the greatest marvel of the world and the greatest miracle ever to exist 
is the existence of the Jewish people. We've existed from the dawn of time, and ever since Cain went and he killed his brother Abel, the Jewish people have been in the crosshairs of nation after nation, trying to wipe us out, either spiritually or physically. With Haman, the intention was to wipe out the Jew Jewish people physically. With the Greeks, the intention was to wipe out the Jewish people spiritually. With the pogroms, and all the way culminating, unfortunately, with the Holocaust, nations have arisen to try and wipe out the Jewish people on a physical level and on a spiritual level. And here I am speaking to you in the year 5771 to the creation of the world in the year 2011. As a Jew, speaking to Jewish people, articulating messages from the Pasha, we still exist. The greatest miracle that this world has ever seen, and the greatest feat of history, is the fact that the Jewish people still exist. And our existence is Tehilati of Saperu is expressing the greatness of God. That even though nations have arisen to try and wipe out the Jewish people, Amzuya Tsarati Li, the love which God has for the nation which He formed and which He created, precluded any nation from ever successfully achieving the nefarious and infamous goal of wiping out the Jewish people. Every Jew that walks this planet is by, its very, is by his or her very definition Tehilati Saperu speaking the praises of God. And every single Jew and Jewess that walks this planet is Amzuya Tzartili was created by God with a tremendous overpowering love. This gives us pause for thought. When you see a Jew walking in the street, they may not be doing things which I might be doing or you might be doing. They may not keep kosher, they may not have any mezuzot on their doors, they may not ever enter into a shul. As we know, we're a pluralistic society in which everyone can do as they wish and as they will, and obviously we hope that Jews do more, but at the end of the day, regardless of what we do or we don't do, we nevertheless remain God's people. Each and every single Jew is God's creation. Amzuya Tzartili, it's Vayikra El Moshe. There's a tremendous love which God has for each and every single Jew regardless. And whilst we obviously always strive to do more, it does not diminish the fact that we are loved by God regardless. And for us, the take-home message has to be if God loves every Jew regardless of the, what they do or don't do in the Yiddishkeit, then how much more so must we express and have a love of each and every single Jew? Not to sit in judgment of another. Not to look down on another who doesn't perhaps live up to our own personal standards, whatever they may be. Because remember... There's someone always higher than us and greater than us who could, in theory, look down on us. The Jewish people can ill afford to be judgmental of one another. We can encourage, we can try to teach individuals to embrace more of Yiddishkeit. But at the end of the day, the love which God has for a Jew is essential. It's based on the fact that we are, not the fact only that we do. And I'd like to find, finish off with a fascinating story. It was in 1973, Yom Kippur War, Israel was really caught off the back leg, and I'll keep it brief. Essentially, there was a, an armored brigade, a, a, a tanks corps, that was surrounded by the Egyptian army, and it really didn't look like there was any hope, and the soldiers were devastated. It looked like... It was going to be the last night on earth. And there was one religious soldier in the platoon and he turned to his comrades and he said to them, Friends, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be downcast about. This is the first time in 2,000 years that Jewish people, Jewish men, have donned Jewish garb 
a Jewish uniform in a Jewish army defending the Jewish people of Israel. And for that, we have to be grateful. And even if we lose this battle, we should be aware that we are standing on monumental times. Anyhow, he lifted up the spirits of all of his friends. They danced and sang the night away. And one of the men turned around to God and said, Listen, God, if I make it out of here alive, I promise to put on tefillin each and every single day. Next morning, the bombardment started. And it was a fierce and tough battle. And only towards the middle of the morning was reinforcements coming. And finally, the Israeli army was able to push back the Egyptians. And when they went and they checked the casualties, there were many casualties, many wounded. This religious soldier who had so given inspiration to his brethren, unfortunately, had been killed. And this soldier who had promised to don tefillin each and every single day had lost his arm and couldn't put on tefillin of the arm. He could put on tefillin of the head, but not of the arm. And it always bothered him why it was that this one soldier who had, was religious and was so passionate and really inspired the people, why did God take him? And moreover, why did God preclude him from being able to keep his word and his promise and putting on tefillin? And on one occasion, he had the opportunity to be by the Lubavitch Rebbe, and he asked this question. And reportedly, the, the Lubavitch Rebbe responded as follows. He said, as far as why that religious soldier was killed, I don't know. But I can tell you what he achieved that night when he inspired is something immeasurable, is something that he will take with him to the world to come. He says, when as for you, I think maybe the message that God was telling you is that he loves you irrespective of what you do. You think he only loves you because you can put on tefillin? God loves you because you are a Jew. This nation I have created for me, they will bespeak my praises. And whilst each and every one of us needs to try and do some more, be it putting on tefillin, making sure we have mezuzot on all, on all, all our doors, strengthening our kashrut, whatever it might be, it's not for me to dictate what any Jew should take upon themselves. I am not here to try and exclude trying to better ourselves from a Jewish point of view, merely to tell us that God loves us and God loves each and every single Jew regardless of what we do. And therefore, we have to love our fellow Jew regardless of their level of observance, the level of commitment, be it to Torah and mitzvot, or to the Jewish community, Ahavat Yisrael, love of a fellow Jew.